Welcome, my friends, officially to the Agent Hacker Era. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. We kick off today with a story that could very easily be a main episode. Anthropic say they've thwarted the first reported use case of AI-enabled or really agentic cyber espionage. In mid-September, Anthropic detected suspicious activity that was later determined to be a, quote, highly sophisticated espionage campaign. The company said that they have high confidence that the threat actor was a Chinese state-sponsored hacking group. The unprecedented part was that the group didn't just use AI for planning. Claude's agenda capabilities were used to carry out the attack. The hackers reportedly used Claude code to automate an infiltration of 30 global targets with a small number of successes. The targets were organizations like large tech companies, financial institutions, chemical manufacturers, and government agencies. Anthropic monitored this activity across 10 days, banned accounts as they were identified, and coordinated with authorities as appropriate. They said that Claude Code was able to perform 80 to 90% of the attack, with human intervention only required during a handful of key decision points. This allowed the attack to be carried out at a speed that would have been impossible for human hackers. Claude's guardrails were circumventing the attack into smaller tasks, which each seemed innocent but added up to a massive system breach. In their postmortem, Anthropic wrote, This campaign has substantial implications for cybersecurity in the age of AI agents, systems that can be run autonomously for long periods of time, and that complete complex tasks largely independent of human intervention. Agents are valuable for everyday work and productivity, but in the wrong hands, they can substantially increase the viability of large scale cyber attacks. Anthropic believes this issue will grow as AI models become more capable, so they're expanding their detection capabilities. They wrote, with the correct setup, threat actors can now use agentic AI systems for extended periods to do the work of entire teams of experienced hackers. Less experienced and resourced groups can now potentially perform large-scale attacks of this nature. They further noted that this is an escalation of the Vibe hacking findings they reported over the summer, as those incidents still had, quote, humans very much still in the loop directing the operations. I'm sure this is a topic that we will be hearing a lot more about in the months to come. But one other story from Anthropic in a very different dimension of their work they are joining the infrastructure build-out, announcing a $50 billion commitment for U.S. data centers. Up until now, Anthropic has been a renter of compute, getting most of their access through partnerships with Google and Amazon. On the financial side, this hasn't been a big problem, allowing Anthropic to functionally spend equity instead of cash on their largest expense during their early growth phase. But it has come with trade-offs. At certain points, Anthropic has been required to use in-house chips from Amazon and Google when they might have preferred to be using NVIDIA's GPUs. They've also been repeatedly bottlenecked by compute, leading to severe rate limits that hampered customer retention at times. With this year's rapid growth, Anthropic has stepped up to another echelon, and consequently, they're looking to own some of their own infrastructure. The announcement discussed several sites to be built across the U.S., including in Texas and New York. UK-based data center developer Fluidstack will partner on the project, with the expectation that the data centers will start coming online next year. Anthropic spoke about the project in terms of the administration's AI goals, saying it was about, quote, maintaining American AI leadership by strengthening domestic technology infrastructure. CEO Dario Amade said in a statement, we're getting closer to AI that can accelerate scientific discovery and help solve complex problems in ways that weren't possible before. These sites will help us build more capable AI systems that can drive those breakthroughs while creating American jobs. Now, speaking of $50 billion, that is also the reported valuation from an upcoming fundraising round for Mira Mirati's Thinking Machines Lab. According to Bloomberg reporting sources, the deal terms haven't been finalized, and some sources said the round could close at 55 or even 60 billion. For those keeping track at home, that would be a very quick 4x from TML's $12 billion valuation from their fundraising round in July. The new valuation would catapult TML to become one of the most valuable private companies ever less than a year from launch. For some quick comparisons, Stripe's most recent mark in secondary markets is around 106 billion, Databricks recently raised at 100 billion, and Canva reportedly marked up to $42 billion during a tender offer to employees in August. Now, it is true that TML is no longer a pre-product company with the release of their reinforcement learning platform Tinker last month, but they are still pre-revenue and haven't really established a clear business model or even a firm product niche. Sources said that Tinker is being used by several university research groups as well as some paying enterprise customers, but this valuation certainly isn't going to be based on anything like revenue forecasts or anything like that. As with earlier rounds, it's a bet on talent, with TML boasting a stacked roster of some of the best AI researchers drawn from OpenAI, DeepMind, and other labs. Really, the only comp that truly makes sense is Ilya Sutskever's Safe Superintelligence, which is also a pre-product bet on talent. SSI established a $32 billion valuation in April. Moving over into product land, Google has added deep research to Notebook LM. Now, Notebook LM has already proven to be one of the most interesting and popular tools in AI, but until now, the way to get the best results was pretty manual. Google says the addition of deep research will allow users to automate the process of putting together source documents, 
allowing Notebook LM to function more like an AI research assistant. Their example video showed a user simply typing in latest breakthroughs in quantum physics and setting the agent to work. Come back a few minutes later and Notebook has an entire dossier ready to read or transform into a podcast or video slide deck. Speaking of video slide decks, in addition, Notebook LM has introduced the ability to prompt custom styles for video overviews. They showed a variety of different styles like 8-bit pixelated art, pop art, turn of the century art nouveau, and these are firmly in that category of app updates, which aren't about some underlying model improvement, but about making a product simply more aligned with what its users need from it. Still, that wasn't Google's biggest launch of the day. DeepMind has released an agent called SEMA 2 as a research preview. SEMA, which stands for Scalable Instructable Multi-World Agent, was described by DeepMind CEO Demis Hassabis as a general agent that can understand and reason about complex instructions and complete tasks in simulated game worlds, even ones it has never seen before. He continued, incredible to see how it can just learn from self-play, a crucial step towards AGI. Now, the first version of SEMA was released in March of 2024 and was fairly primitive. It learned to complete some simple tasks like following instructions like turn left, climb the ladder, or open the map across a wide range of video games. It had a total of 600 different instructions it knew how to follow. The most interesting part about that result was that the agent could take what it learned from training conducted in one game and apply it to a game it had never seen before. Over DeepMind's total eval set, SEMA 1 had just a 31% success rate and the rate plummeted to just a couple of percentage points on games it hadn't seen before. SEMA 2 has demonstrated a dramatic improvement in task completion. It has a 65% success rate across the eval set, which is starting to get pretty close to the human level of 76%. On games the agent hadn't seen before, it achieved around a 13% success rate. The ability to generalize across different environments is one of the reasons many researchers are looking to world models as one of the keys to AGI. DeepMind even tested how SEMA 2 would perform in entirely novel games that were generated on the fly by their Genie 3 world simulation model. SEMA 2 was able to orient itself, understand instructions, and take meaningful actions towards a goal, despite never having seen the environment before. Super interesting and firmly in this theme of alternative paths to AGI that we'll be increasingly spending time on. Lastly, a couple quick follow-up notes to GPT 5.1. It is now available via the API, and OpenAI has also published a prompting guide to help developers migrate their use cases. The guidance actually reveals a lot about the design decisions made for this model update. For example, OpenAI suggested 5.1 has a tendency to be too verbose in providing an answer. They suggested it's worthwhile giving specific instructions about how much detail you want to be contained in the outputs. The guide also noted that the model is much more steerable than previous iterations, so developers can dial in very specific behaviors when it comes to agents. I'm continuing to have great early experiences with GPT 5.1, and I'm excited to see what you guys think of it. For now, though, that is going to do it for the headlines. Next up, the main episode.